I remember the experience my, my son had. And I remember all of the volunteers, all of the parents, all of the directors, all of the teachers that got to be a part of that. I get to be that now. I get to be a part of these students, these directors, these parents' journey. And it fills me with so much pride. And um, it's, just, it's just something I'm honored to get to do. That's Christina Harvey of the Music for All Key event staff and she takes us behind the scenes at a BOA Regional. Also on this episode of BOA Today, we talked with the Goshen High School directors, this time including Max Malt, much heralded middle school director, talking about building a great staff and how you start your students off right. I'm Tim Hinton, the beast of the marching arts. Welcome to BOA Today. The Marching Roundtable presents BOA Today a special podcast created to take you behind the scenes and up close to the great performances, interesting stories, and fascinating people that make Bands of America so exciting. The Marching Roundtable is proud to be an official media partner of Music for All. This podcast series is sponsored by Fred J. Miller Incorporated, found at fjminc.com slash roundtable. Up first, we go behind the scenes at a Bands of America regional with key event staff member, Christina Harvey. I am on uh, Music for All's key event staff. We're the, we're the cool kids. <laughs> <laughs> Music for All uh, has uh, their key event staff that um, will have different roles at the regional, super regionals, and festival, and the summer symposium that come in and um, just do our role. We get trained in different positions. The goal is for them to be able to, they've, they've got so much to focus on, so much to think about. Our goal is to make sure it runs smoothly, that they don't have to worry about how everything's flowing or running or if they're in the right place or not, or if they're not going to see a smiling face. We want to make sure it runs smoothly. It needs to be the best experience. I got involved with Fans of America. Um, while my son was in high school, McNeil High School, and we were the host school for the Austin Regional, we still are. Um, and the first year uh, we hosted, I remember it was my son's freshman year, and I was in pit crew that year, and the show got rained out, so we really didn't, and, the, and it was the first year we were hosting, and the, 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 that first year we performed too, which that hasn't happened again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't perform when you're hosting. But um, that first year it got rained out. The second year um, I joined forces um, with another band parent to uh, co-coordinate, to be site coordinators um, as the host school. And then I adopted it from there on out for the remainder of my years while my son was there until he graduated the summer of 2017. And when Caden graduated, I was approached by Laura Blake and Steve Cantor from Music for All. And they said, we would love for you to come join our key event staff. Keep going. And I was like, I couldn't think of anything better to do. I would love to. I remember the experience my, my son had. And I remember all of the volunteers, all of the parents, all of the directors, all of the teachers that got to be a part of that, I get to be that now. I get to be a part of these students, these directors, these parents' journey. And it fills me with so much pride. And um, it's, just, it's just something I'm honored to get to do.
know, when the students come up to the front sideline and, you know, at the regionals, I will, that'll be my position, the regionals and the super regionals um, here in Texas, I'll do front side, front, front side line. And I love that because one's percussion, my son's percussionist and um, I was in pit crew. So I get to talk to all of the pit crew parents. Um, but I just remember the nerves of all the students and they're getting to that point. And it's, you know, you're that first face before they see, just before they take the field and perform their little hearts out. So for me, having a smiling face, a familiar face, someone to help calm the nerves, you know, get them talking about whose first time is it and who's the senior and parents, is this your first time? Just calming the nerves and just giving those smiles for that, you know, we're there for 10 to 12 minutes or so before they take the field and answer questions because they may have some questions that they didn't even know they had till they got right there to that point where they're fixing the start and they're like, ah, where do I go? You know where to go. Let's walk through it. <laughs> so just being able to be that person to help calm the nerves with a smile, a friendly face, an easy conversation, a reminder, or just some simple instruction just to help. It's that that's what it's all about. The people that are in these roles, they, like me, we all have a life, a job outside of what we get to do for Music for All. But we leave all of that, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what's happening in our world outside of our events that we get to um, work at, we're there with that one goal in mind and to make this, and you, and you hear um, Dr. Earnhardt and you hear everyone at Music for All say, this is a, we want this to be a positively life-changing experience. So we'll leave all of that behind. And the goal is to have that, that presence that is calming, that is reassuring, that is motivating, that is positive for the students, for the directors, for the parents. So that is the goal of everyone. And I, I forgot to mention, so at the Indy Super Regional and at Grand Nats, I get to be in that, in the tunnel and it's at the band entry tunnel. So it's that, that spot where you've got all of the bands and drumline and uh, front ensemble and, and guard coming and going at the same time. <laughs> so I get to I get to manage that um, that traffic. It is so much fun because you've got it. It's like nonstop. It's it just keeps going. So I I get to I get to be there for all of them, not just front ensemble, but all of them um, right before they take the field. So that's even more fun. Just last weekend at, um, not last week, the weekend before at the Austin Regional, I was quick, quickly reminded about those 4.45 wake-ups, 4.45 in the morning. <laughs> There's been some where it's 3 a.m. wake-up. It just depends on the show. But you wake up early. You've got those smiles. Everybody's energy's going. We're ready. It's, a, it's, it's the day for band. It's a great day for band. So then you're energized because you're meeting all of these bands and you're meeting the parents, you're meeting the directors. You get to be a part of the journey with them. Not everyone's going to make it to the final rounds. Not everybody's going to make it there. But when you do get to be a part of them coming back for their final performance, you, you're energized again because you get to celebrate that with them. And so your energy just keeps getting renewed. And we have breaks, the strategic breaks throughout the day. Me, myself, I drink pickle juice. <laughs> <laughs> to stay hydrated. <laughs> yes, I do. I do. And it's weird. I know, but it works. So at the Austin Regional, I had been saving my, I had been saving my jar of pickle juice because I'd eaten all the pickles. So I'd saved it for that day specifically. <laughs> I took it with me. <laughs> I did. It is supposed to rehydrate you, especially if you're out in the elements that's hot and you're sweating and, you know, Pickle juice rehydrates you. Athletes use it. I use it after I run. And also get motivated by the steps because I will ask, I'll say, how many steps do you have in? Because I'm at, you know, I'm at 25,000. <laughs> so we'll just compete on how many steps we have in too. <laughs> I was thinking back and reflecting on like my why and what's the driving force behind the excitement, the energy, the motivation, the drive, like all of, what is that? And I thought about um, 
my son's experience and my my experience um, as a band parent. So his experience with music education and band. And all of the the chapters throughout his his life in school, all the directors that had a played a part in his life, the band family um, from elementary through high school through college, you know, every one of them played a part in helping craft this young man into what he is today. Right now, he is um, student teaching here in the Round Rock ISD. Um, he will be a band director. He will that we're going to be in band forever. But not only his journey, but mine too. So him going into high school, um, I was involved. I I did all the things. I was on the board. I was on pick crew. I loved going to the games, the competitions. But you know, the band students, they have this big family, their big band family, but the parents do too. We make all of these connections with um, the other families and you had like your tribe, right? I didn't want that to end. I wanted to help be a part of that too and help give back and continue to give back because I know how important it was to my son's life and to mine throughout these years. There's someone else that's probably having a very similar journey that my son had. While it wasn't always beautiful, there were always beautiful people there to help us get it through, to help get through that journey. If I get to be one of those people smiling, encouraging, motivating, that'll be worth every 4.45 a.m. wake up, every sweat, every red face selfie, every blister on your foot, every 30,000 step day. It'll be worth every second. And that is all that matters to me. Up next, we go back and visit again with the band at Goshen High School. We're following them all throughout the season as they make their journey through some regionals and end up at Grand Nationals. This time, we get to talk with their legendary middle school director, Max Malt. We'll get to that conversation right after this short sponsor message. My official name is Max J. Mall. J stands for Joseph. I've been a band director, musician, teacher in the Goshen area, officially with Goshen Community School since 1976 to the present. Um, I actually retired from teaching in 2016. I actually gave up the directorship for high school in 2000. That's when Tom Cox was hired. And, but I've known this guy to my right or the screen left, mm -hmm. Josh Coffin, because he was a student of mine and then came in, and was actually part of the growth program of how we really got started. Because Coffin worked with the Cavaliers and was in the Cavaliers. And so in his part time, he would, in the summer, he would come and help us with our foot position and look at you know the composition of the marching band Literally, we would meet at some little restaurant outside of town and we would look at the, the drill and comments and, and then we'd both say, now we don't need that, we don't want that, we want to add this. And that's really how this thing took off. So with guys like this, rather than me, I, I was just the dummy that went out and said, you know more than I do, can you help me? <laughs> and so that's how it happened. So that's what I'm, right now I'm, a part-time teacher in the Goshen system. I have an 80% contract and I do strictly sixth grade band, seventh grade band, eighth grade band. I don't do any high school. So anything has happened since 2016, it's these guys. <laughs> so I'm just happy to still be a part of it. 
So when you have someone like Josh sitting next to you and you've seen him, not only you started him as a beginning musician, but now you've watched that whole arc. That must feel pretty amazing. Well, it's humbling because you see these guys and, and you realize that they, they're way better musicians than you are. And, and that's why this program became so good. Because like this guy, this guy here, he's also a monster alto player. He's a great musician. And so they just keep hiring people that are even, they'll try to find people better than they are to keep this boat afloat. That's how programs continue to be great. And they've done a great job. I think Max is a little modest. Uh, <laughs> Matt, I mean, when I came in 2000, I, I couldn't believe the way the middle school band played. It was unreal. And so that, you know, we all know that good high school bands come from good middle school bands. And um, he, uh, he's a little too polite, but he uh, wouldn't toot his own horn, but we are as good as we are because the middle school kids have him as a beginning, you know, when they start their instruments. And, and Max Johnson and, you know, the other part of the team as well. And we also have, through up through this, there's this guy by the name of Steve Yoder that was part of the initial growth plan in Goshen Community Schools. Steve Yoder came out of a program that's right down the road from us called Concord High School. And he was also a product of the Cavaliers. And he's a very fine teacher. So we were able to get him here on a part time and he took our drum line to a national level. Actually, if you look back far enough, he his drum line, indoor drum line, was the first high school to win what you call a world champion indoor. Yeah, that's how good this guy was. And he was on our staff. So then you get Kaufman, you get Cox, and you get this Josh, and you get um, Steve Yoder. And we've had great drumline guys all along. And presently, we have Matt James, who's a very fine technician. He's our head percussion guy right now. So it hasn't just been one guy taking all the pictures. It's been all of us taking pictures. If you look at the people that you hire and and you know that how to this program can expand and expand and expand so you're always looking for the next great person to be part of your team and so you've had enough people that you've come in contact with saying well he has good credentials but he's not the right fit and so it's getting the right personality with the right talent absolutely so middle school, having great middle school players and giving getting a good start as a musician on their instrument is everything. It is so, so important. Um, so how do you motivate those young kids to spend time on their horns when they're just starting? Okay, the big thing is, is that you have to turn your rehearsal hall into a practice studio. So if you want the kids to learn scales, that's what you practice. You practice fundamental scales. You have to make the classroom the practice room. Because you have to guide them through this entire thing, this entire fundamental, like good tone quality, what a key signature is, what a time signature is, what a whole note is. And then you have to demonstrate for them on your instrument what a good sound is and what it feels like and so we do all that these guys here they pick up their horn daily and play for the kid so it's not like well my band director doesn't play i don't know what instrument he plays actually if you go throughout united states there are many directors that after they graduate never get the horn out of the case that's not a good thing so like in john like tom and, and josh's jazz band if you were to walk in there you would see them with the saxophone and he would say no it goes like this and then they would demonstrate the phrase on the saxophone or if they went to trumpet player to play this phrase they they can play all those parts now these guys play so in goshen here all of us just play our instrument daily like when he teaches clarinet he has a clarinet that he takes with him to the classroom. Can't believe that, right? And like Kaufman, he'll get a flute and off he goes to the flute room 
and he plays the flute for the kids, and they go, oh, is that what that sounds like? Oh, yes, every one of us do that. We don't just sit there and say, no, it's second valve that looks like this. No, it sounds like this and looks like this. And you'll hear Max play trumpet in the high brass class, too. Yeah. Yep, we all demonstrate constantly. And so obviously the kid who's sitting in the trumpet line or the clarinet line, if he hears you play, and like me, I'm 77 years old almost. And he says, well, that guy can play that way. How does he do that? Well, it's because you play daily. And so that's just a walking thing that we do. We play daily. Which I think is one way to inspire the kids as well, because then they hear something that they can aspire to and they know what they're supposed to sound like and then i think that we all also take care to teach them how to practice mm -hmm. so you know what to listen for you know how to isolate problem areas how to repeat things and that is just part of the band classroom so that hopefully when they go home on their own they uh, know a, somewhat of a process to go through to make themselves better and then I know that we we just say, all right, take them home and practice. Test tomorrow. I'm going to hear you play this tomorrow, so you better be better. And, you know, keep them on their toes, starting from a very young age. Sixth grade is where it all starts. Yep. So, so, Max, they play for each other in front of each other in sixth grade class? Oh, constantly. Oh, constantly. yeah. Like yes. his daughter, I have this little coupon. It's kind of a caveat, you know, for ice cream. And if you can play this exercise and this exercise and this exercise by memory in front of the whole class, I'll give you this coupon. And then you go to Culver's and trade in the coupon. And so his daughter, Emmy, she got up in front of the class and plays all three of these nice little etudes. And other kids see that and go, well, if she can do that, I can do that. But the other side of the coin is you don't have to be perfect. All we want our kids to do is show a high level of mastery for the concept. It doesn't need to be studio perfect. It's just gotta be a high level of mastery so we know that we can teach the next level. You can watch the entire 26 minute conversation with Max and the other directors at Goshen High School on the Marching Roundtable YouTube channel. You don't want to miss it because there's tons of great information about keeping students engaged in the classroom, getting beginners excited about band, and all kinds of information about how to build a great staff. Watch for BOA Today every Wednesday this season from the Marching Roundtable. We take you behind the scenes and up close to the great performances, interesting stories, and fascinating people that make Bands of America so exciting. If you have a story about your band family that you would like us to share, please contact Tim via email at tim at marchingroundtable.com or fill out the contact form at marchingroundtable.com. Marching Arts Education is the home of the Marching Roundtable podcast. We give you access to the top marching arts professionals through live webinars, podcasts, videos, interviews, and online coursework. With over 1,000 podcasts and hundreds of webinars and videos, there are hours of great professional development for you and your staff. Sign up for a membership to Marching Arts Education to get complete access to all webinars, videos, and podcasts, plus discounts on coursework. Many directors are using professional development funds through their school or boosters to make these resources available to their staff. Imagine what you could do with so many great new ideas from the top professionals in our activity. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and sign up for our newsletter to find out about the latest podcasts, webinars, and new content. Find all of this and sign up at marchingartseducation.com. Marching Arts Education and the Marching Roundtable are proud strategic partners of Music for All. The Bands of America Championships, presented by Yamaha, are a program of Music for All. Music for All's mission is to create, provide, and expand positively life-changing experiences through Music for All.
For more resources for educators and boosters, please visit advocacy.musicforall.org. Stop! Stop! I was attacked by a bug! Stop and start over.